Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and have a very good day. Today, I'm going to share with all of you guys how to classify the column. Either the column that we are going to design is short or slender by adopting Euro code 2. I would like to give an appreciation to I.R. Saleh for preparing this example in his book for reinforced concrete design to Eurocode 2. So, in this example, it will explain how we are going to determine either the column is short or slender before we proceed to design the reinforced concrete of the column in pro in order to provide the suitable numbers of the reinforcement for the column. In this example, okay, we are going to classify the column that is connected to the ground floor and also first floor that is also connecting to beam at major axis and also minor axis. So we have to know that in order for us to determine which one is our main beam, which one is our secondary beam, is based on the axis. The beam that is connected to the YY axis is called as the main beam, where the beam that is connected to the major axis here is called as a secondary beam. Okay, so given here are the moment for both axis that is acting on top of the column. So this moment is actually the moment that we transfer from the beam to the column. So the analysis, normally we use a frame analysis for the column. The material characteristic here for FCK is 25 Newton per millimeter squared. And then the characteristic strength for the steel is 500 Newton per millimeter squared. The first step is we have to determine the dimension of the element that will contribute to the column. So there is two elements which is a beam and also column. The first one dimension of the column B times H is equal to 275 times 350 millimeter. Then we have to calculate the clear the effect the clear height of the column. So in order for us to calculate the clear height of the column, for the major axis is equal to 5,000, which is the clear height here, okay, minus, okay, okay, minus with 500, okay, 500, for, the minor axis, okay, is equal to 5,000 minus 400, which is this one. Then we get the answer here. Then we determine the dimension and size of the beam. For the main beam, B times H is 250 times 500, and then it is straight away for the L1, it L1 is actually at the left side here, 6,000. And then L2 here is 8,000 millimeter. And then for the secondary beam, L1 is equal to 4,000. And L2 also 4,000. Okay. Next step, we have to calculate the moment of inertia. So moment of inertia for the column and beam is different. It depends on the axis. For the column... IZZ is equal to BH cube over 12. Then we get the answer here. And then for the IYY is equal to HB cube over 12. So please make sure you did not use a wrong formula in order for you to calculate the moment of inertia for the column. For the beam, it's straight away BH cube over 12. For the main beam and also secondary beam. What is the next process? The next process, we have to calculate the stiffness of the column and also beam. The stiffness of the column, 
KZZ. So the basic formula for the stiffness K is EI over L. So in order for us to calculate the stiffness, we just ignore the E value and then we just include the IZZ value, IYY value, I for the main beam and also I for the secondary beam divided by the respecting respective length. So KZZ is equal to IZZ divided by LZ and then IYY for the KYY is equal to IYY divided by LY. Okay. And then for the main beam, one, the stiffness is equal to I for the main beam one divided by length for the main beam one. For the main beam two is equal to I for the main beam two divided with L for the main beam two. And also same for the secondary Beam. You have to check which one is one, which one is two. Okay? So, please make sure you didn't put in the wrong value in order for you to calculate the stiffness for the column and also the beam. Next process is the relative column stiffness. So, for the relative column stiffness, you have to calculate for the both axis, Z axis and also Y axis. This value is important for us to use in order for us to calculate the effective length of the column. So for the both axes, we have to calculate at the top end and also bottom end of the column because the column that we are going to design, there is a bottom part and also at the top part. So we have to calculate the relative column stiffness for the both end. Okay, so the formula for the relative column stiffness small k here is equal to k of the column divided by 2 times the summation of k of the beam. So for the z axis, so we took the value for the k column here, okay, for the z axis, divided by 2 times with the summation of main beam, okay, k of the main beam. And then, same because of uh, same value for the bottom end at the z axis okay because the value is same then you repeat for the y axis so you have to make sure that the value of this k1 and also k2 should be bigger than 0 0.1 okay so if it is less than one you have to use at least minimum 0 0.1 for both condition Z exists and also Y exists. Next process, we have to calculate the effective length of the column. The effective length of the column we will use in order for us to calculate the slenderness ratio. So we are, we know that this column is a brace column. Therefore, we use a formula for effective length of column for the brace column. So if it is an unbraced column, you have to use the unbraced formula that is stated in Eurocode 2 or in your design appendix. So you have to calculate your uh, effective length of the column for the Z axis and also Y axis. So you put in here the formula 0.5 L naught square root of 1 plus K1 over 0 0.45 plus K1 time with 1 plus K2 over 0 0.45 plus K2. So the LX value here for the Z axis is actually, okay, LOZ, LZ, LZ that you calculate before, okay? And then here is your LY, okay? And then you put in the value, then you will get the effective length of the column for Z axis and also Y axis. Next process is the radius of gyration. The radius of gyration is I equal to I here. Okay, what is your I here? 0 0.98. We have a look here, which is your IZZ. Okay. Therefore, for that axis, radius gyration for that axis is equal to IZZ over area of the column, B time H of the column. And then you have to square root, you get this answer. And then for the IYY, IY, equal to IYY divided by AC, which is area of the column square root, you will get this answer. Next process, you have to calculate the slenderness ratio. 
this value is going to be compared with the limitation of the slenderness ratio for the z-axis and y-axis. So the lambda or slenderness ratio is equal to L0 over I. So for the z-axis here, slenderness ratio for the z-axis here, you, take, you took this value. Okay, This is L or Z from here divided by this IZ, I which is the radius of gyration. And then for the Y axis is equal to LOY here divided by IY here, radius of gyration for Y, then you get this answer. What is the next procedure? The next procedure, we have to calculate the limitation of the slenderness ratio. So the formula for the limitation of the slenderness ratio, lambda limit is equal to 20 times A times B times C over square root M. So what is A? A is the equal to 1 over 1 plus 0 0.2 plus the coefficient of the creep. So normally we use 0 0.7, but it depends on the equation of equation. So sometimes uh, there is a specific value given in the, uh, in the equation, 0 0.85. So normally we use or uh, assume the value as 0 0.7. Then B is equal to 1 plus 2 omega, and then square root is equal to 1.1. Normally that is the normal practice that we use in this formula. Okay, for the C is equal to 1.7 minus this Rm. What is your Rm? Rm is the ratio of the moment which is MO1, which is the bottom moment, over MO2, which is the top moment. So you have to calculate for both axes, ratio of the moment for the Z axis and also Y axis. So this value, MO1, MO2, is given in the equation here. Here is MO1 for the Z axis. Here is MO2 for the Z axis. Here MO1 for the Y axis, here is MO2 for the Y axis. Okay, and then here is the axial load 1050 kilonewton. So we go, we go back to this equation. Okay, so then we have to calculate your ratio of the moment, which is equal to negative 12 because it is at left side, so which is negative moment. So divided by 40, you will get negative 0 0.3, then your CZ is equal to 1.7 minus minus 0 0.3, which is plus, then you get the answer is 2. You do the same process for the Y axis. Then you calculate your N. N is equal to NED, which is axial load over ACFCD. So ACD is the area of the column, and then FCD is equal to 0 0.85 FCK over, which this is a, gamma C, which is 1.5, then you get the answer here, FCD is equal to 14.17 Newton per millimeter square. Then you calculate your N value, you get 0 0.77. Okay. Then you have to calculate the limitation of the slenderness ratio for the both axis Z and also Y. Then after you get the answer, you have to compare with your slenderness ratio lambda Z and also lambda Y. So if your lambda z is less than the limitation of the value for the z axis, therefore the column is short. If the slenderness ratio for y axis is less than, okay, slenderness limit for the y axis is also considered as a short column. Okay, so if what if you get the answer one is short, one is slender, then you have to design the column as a slender column. So if both condition is a short, you have to design as a short. And then if one of it is slender, you have to design as a slender. If both column condition is slender, you have to design as a slender column. Here are the effective length of the column in uh, using a simplified method. You may use this method in order for you to identify the effective length of the column without using the formula given in the previous uh, step. Okay. I hope that with this example, it drives you to determine what is the column that you're going to design, either it is short or slender. This process should be done before you start on reinforced concrete 
design of the column. So you have to identify because it will help you to determine what is the method that you need to use in order for you to design the column. So I hope that with this sharing session, you really understand how to determine the column is short or slender by using column classification based on Euro code 2. So that's it, my sharing session. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.